Thanks. Um, well, obviously, these have been um, three um, pretty interesting days, to say the least. Um, the, the energy that it took to, um, to finish this off was, um, was really pretty remarkable to see, um, see our players summing up that, that energy today after what happened yesterday. You know, that took a lot and, uh, you know, couldn't be prouder of them. Um, they acted like they could have played, you know, another 40 minutes if they had to. You know that they were they were committed to. We're going to do whatever we have to do to win, and you could tell by the way we played defensively that that was the case. Um, <clears throat> you know, Georgetown had an incredible run, and they're um, okay. uh, hopefully they're um, you know under consideration for an NCA NCA spot, but. You know, given what happened to their coaching staff at the beginning of the season, they had a pretty remarkable year. Um, so congratulations to them. And um, we're very fortunate that we have these two up here. And that makes all the difference in the world. Paige, I'm going to give you one more assist if you could flip those name cards for me. Oh. Appreciate that. Questions for the student athletes. Please wait for the microphone and state your name and affiliation. Carl, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Carl Adamek, Journal Inquirer, Hearst. Um, kind of didn't want to ask this first question, but it, it's okay. Um, you got the basket on the assist that, pay, that Nika moved past Diana Tarazi. Can you tell me what it's like, has been like, to play these last four seasons with her? And what's your thought on her pursuit of the assist record? She needs nine more. Yeah. Well, she should get it. Um, I was mad. Uh, I forgot which game it was when I didn't get her 500th assist. So I'm glad I could do that one today. Um, but playing with Nika has just been a joy. Um, it's kind of unfortunate we didn't get to play together more. Um, but this is like my sister, my twin. Like, She don't gotta say nothing more. <laughs> she's just been there for me through everything that I've been through, and I've been there for her, whatever she's going through. But this, this is what um, makes the game of basketball so special. It's not what we remember for what we did on the court, but what us players will take away the most is our relationships and the memories and just the bonds that we've created. Um, but she makes everything so easy on the court. Um, she's the one that holds us down offensively, defensively. Um, just a solid force every single game. Um, so consistent. Um, her and Aaliyah have been our rocks this entire four years we've been together. Um, just consistency in the lineup. But I'm sad she's leaving. I'm, I'm proud to see her to see her go. Um, and I'll show, I know she'll be great wherever she goes. But it's been a real joy to play with Nika and be her teammate. Question in the back. Uh, this is T. Baker with the next for either Paige or Nika. Just uh, if you could speak a little bit to um, how I stepped up uh, over the past couple days and um, just kind of how you've seen her grow throughout her freshman season. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where we would be without ice especially this tournament, but I'm so, so, so proud of her because only we as a team know um, how hard-headed she is, how stubborn she is. She's worse than us. <laughs> and only we as a team know what kind of milestone she accomplished today. And to see her growth, to, to just be a part of it, I mean, it's amazing. I've never seen that in my life, honestly. Um, She's grown so much over the last couple of days, and I'm so happy for her because she's a great player. But sometimes you need to remind her what kind of great player she is. And this past three games, she didn't need no reminding because she knew it. And she stepped up when we needed her the most, and that takes some maturity, that takes some 
Um, that takes everything, you know, and uh, I don't think I would be able to do that in that situation. I'm not strong enough, but um, she definitely is, and she proved it, and she proved it to herself more than before everybody. I feel like she needed to prove it to herself, and I'm so proud of her. Question up front from Brad. Hi, Paige. Brad from WNBA A Swish. Congratulations on being named most outstanding player. As you and your teammates watch next Sunday for your seed and placement, how important is this win in bolstering your case to get a good seeding in the big dance? And how far of a run do you feel that you can make? Uh, yeah, I think winning this tournament was huge in terms of placement. Um, we want to get the highest seed possible, so winning out was a key emphasis um, during the regular season. Um, but I think when we're watching, we'll just, like we have all season, just go with whatever um, is thrown at us, go wherever we're seated at, um, make the most of it, um, and hopefully we can get home court advantage. That's a huge thing that we that we want to have, um, being one of the top four seeds. So that would be great. Um, but just continue to play UConn basketball, um, continue to get better at practice these two weeks before the, t the tournament starts, um, and just focusing on becoming a better team. Um, well, take us how far we want to go in March. Question from Mike on the left. Paige, Mike from Hearst. Um, would you just share your thoughts on the topics Coach hit in his opening, what it took emotionally and physically to do what you guys did over the course of these three days, and what does this body of work mean to you? Yeah, it means everything. Uh, just the continuous blows we've taken throughout the entire season, um, us finding consistency in, in who we had in our lineups and building chemistry. And then one of our um, main people go out in Aaliyah. So just again, having to step up, having to roll with the punches, having to adjust. Um, but honestly, having been through so much, um, we sort of adapt to it every single time it happens to us. Um, different people step up. Um, we just instilled confidence, confidence within each other. Um, within the freshmen, they'd never been here in this position before. So just con continuing to be in their ears about being confident how we need them and just go out there and play their game. Uh, just time after time, having different people step up and us responding um, to adversity with resilience and perseverance is sort of what our identity is as a team. We'll go to Doug in the front row. Uh, Doug Farmer, DAP. Page, two part question. Just You talked a little bit out there about what it meant to actually be playing this year instead of sitting on the sideline and injured. What does it mean to you to play in the NCAAs again, healthy for the first time in a couple of years? And the second part is just there's so much buzz around women's basketball, this tournament. People are talking about it more than the men's. Are, as the outside, internally, as one who's going to be playing in this, what does it feel like that it seems women's basketball is finally getting its due from fans, media, everyone out there? Yeah, I'm very excited to play in the NCAA tournament. It's what you prepare for your entire life to shine on the biggest stage. Um, so super excited that the time is around and I'm able to play and participate in that um, in a different way I did last year. Um, and then just with women's basketball, it, my freshman year, I didn't even know we weren't able to use the term March Madness. Um, and now we are, which is just a testament to the women's game continuing to grow. Um, big names continue to put up big numbers and people watching and the media is paying more attention. Um, we're getting more just spotlight, I guess, um, and accessibility to it. A lot of people are tuning in and watching. Um, so I think the tournament will be great um, just on continuing the rise of women's basketball. Question from Emily in the back left. Emily Adams, Hartford Current. Um, for either of you guys, I mean, having won a couple of these tournaments before also in seasons where you were dealing with adversity. I mean, did this one feel different for you guys compared to the first one that you won the last couple of years? Um, I mean, every, every time we win, it's a different story. Every tournament championship is a whole, with different people, whether it's on the staff, on the team. Um, it's just a whole different story, a whole different vibe. But um, for me personally, this might be the most special one. Um, not just because it's my last, but it's also because, you know, we've been dealt the worst cards ever, and um, we just never stop believing in ourselves. And, you know, Coach said when the tournament started, or I think when, like, Aaliyah was out or something, he said, 
I'm so confident, nothing can shake us up. And that's true, and it wasn't fake, and that's how we all felt, and we just fed off of each other, and that's because we trust each other, and we were put, we have been put in that situation so many times over and over again. And I mean, I, I don't think there's anybody better prepared for situations like this than us. So having six, seven available players today, seven on the bench, I mean, that, that's ridiculous. And to be able to pull it off the way we pulled it off, with the help of you know everybody in the gym, it was so loud, it was so electric. We were just feeding off of that, feeding off of each other, and yeah, this this is probably the spe most special one. Question from Corey in the second row. Uh, Corey Jamin, Cretonian. Nico, when the first uh, committee rankings came out, you guys were 12th, low three seed, not necessarily guaranteed a home site. Now that you've played through, it feels pretty certain that you will be. How does it feel to know you're going to get at least one more game at home before you end your career? I mean. Honestly, I don't I don't think any of us, me personally at least, I don't even follow that. So I had no idea, <laughs> but um, I kind of expected the whole time that we were going to get that home game. So knowing that we are, I mean, it's just another opportunity for me and the team to play in that in, in the best gym ever, in front of the best fans ever and I can't wait and I feel like we're so excited. I feel like we could, right now we're so tired, but we could go out there and play another game, you know. So, um just super, super excited and so happy that I'm going to be able to share the court with my team, um, especially on that court. It's the most special one. So, One last question for the student athletes. Carl. Nika, I don't think we've talked to you since you announced your decision to, uh, to leave here. Can you take us through the process of that decision? And you know, have you felt that sense of urgency even more now, now that it's over? Um. I feel like, you know, it's been such an emotional year for me, um, what this program has done for me. They took me and my team to Croatia to play in front of my people, brought my sister over to play in Gimple. Um, and then just the senior day, I mean, the whole year was too emotional for me. So many things going on and I'm forever, you know, grateful and thankful. I was able to share those moments with the whole team and I'm so thankful to coach and the whole coaching staff and the whole program, everybody, to be able to make that happen for me. And I just felt like, you know, with all that, it was the best year of my life. And I just felt like I have given my all to this program. And I don't know, it's just a feeling, you know, when it's time for you to leave. Nika Page, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Coach T in the back. Hey, Coach T Baker with the next. Uh, prior to this press conference, we learned that uh, George Townsend talks to hire Darnell as the head coach. Mm -hmm. um, just curious about you know the reactions to that news and, and kind of how you've seen him as an X's and O coach, but also as just a leader in that program. There's a, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot that goes into, um, you know, having a, having a great season. Um, a lot of people have to, have to have a lot of confidence in each other. They have to believe in each other. And um, sometimes, you know, the adversity that they went through in the beginning you know, brings people together. But I think the way he um, navigated all this, um, you know, he didn't make it a, you know, he didn't make it a cause. He didn't make it a, you know, he kept it real, you know, about our team needs to be able to do this. And, <clears throat> um, Getting to this to this game, I told them before the game. I said, you know, when when a team does everything that they're supposed to do, or can do, and put themselves in this situation, I said, I I, I hope that they teams like that get rewarded because they deserve it, and he deserves to be the full time coach there. Um, he's done something that hasn't been done there in a long, long time, and. I, I hope it works out. I would wholeheartedly 
endorse him for that job. Question from Vicki in the second row. Vicki <coughs> Vicky Fulkerson from the New London Day. Gino, um, these, these two guys are, you know, the biggest badasses on the team, and they're sitting up there crying. Is that, is that a, just a result of how much passion and energy and emotion that you guys have spent the last couple of days to win these games without Aaliyah? Like, what's it like to watch them <coughs> just pour their whole souls into everything? They, they approach every, every day like that. Um, since they've been here um, at UConn, that's how they've uh, conducted themselves. They, they infect other people with their enthusiasm, their confidence, their uh, love of the game, and uh, they're not afraid to put themselves out there and, and let everybody see this is who I am. Um, they're comfortable in their own skin and uh, everything about them is real. Um, so the emotions are real, the feelings are real. And, you know, when you're faced with the end is near, the, that does start to well up, you know, because you invest so much of yourself into this. So, yeah, <clears throat> the most passionate people, the most invested that people are, are usually the ones that react like that. Go to the second row, Corey. Uh, Corey John Craytonian. Coach, you've seen so much in the Big East from the original league to mm. the American rebrand, coming back to the Big East. How have you seen the Big East grow? And then how can you continue to push it forward, especially in these last four years after you rejoined the league? Uh, <clears throat> well, it, I, yeah, I've seen it all in this league. Um, I've seen it from the inside, and I've seen it from afar. And um, the the league that I joined in 1985, in May of 85, was uh, a step up from um, a, a league that really wasn't set up to compete at the same level that the men were competing around the country. So it took a lot of really good coaches and a lot of work and a lot of effort to, uh, to improve on that. And then we became the best basketball league ever in women's basketball when, you know, when we added some of the schools from uh, other conferences. And being a part of that was the most amazing thing ever, I think. Um, every single night you were playing a top 20 team. And, and then, unfortunately, you know, we weren't a part of it anymore. And even though we kept winning those seven years, it wasn't the same. It's nothing's the same as winning in the Big East. And we're at a level now where I think um, these are the most trying times ever for this conference because of what's going on nationally and how uh, other schools are able to throw their resources around. So we've got a lot of challenges coming up. But again, I think if you have the right people and you have the right coaches and they have the right administrators and we keep pushing forward. Last year we had five teams in, in the NCAA tournament and that was the most that they've had in, a, in, a, in quite a while. And I don't think we'll get five this year, but I think there'll be there'll be tremendous changes and tremendous improvement in the next couple of years. Brad, hi, Gino. Brad, WNBA Swish. Did you have had the opportunity to coach s some legends, Maya, Stewie, Bird, Tarazi? How does Paige rank up there, in your opinion, on that list? Um, well, if I named all the legends that played for me at every position, Paige probably wouldn't make that team. I tell her that all the time, you know. Uh, you can't go left, you know. You can't beat anybody off the dribble, you know. I just try to keep throwing jabs at her, and you haven't won a national championship, blah, 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 blah. I try to say as many things as I can to her because she just loves 
proven people wrong, as I said yesterday. Um, I, I, I go by this criteria. How many players have I coached that impact the team in as many ways as Paige does? And how many teams rely so much, how many of my teams, on one player to do so much for them? And I would say that that list probably starts with Diana Taurasi and, and Paige Beckers. And no disrespect to any of those others, but they played on uber talented teams where lots of WNBA superstars and Olympic legends. And um, so whether she's a legend, a, a, national, a, a national champion yet, very, very few have impacted UConn basketball the way Paige has. Question from Emily in the back. Jeremy, sticking with Paige, I mean, this is as complete a three-game stretch as we've seen her play maybe all year. Just, I mean, did you feel like something clicked for her this weekend? Did something kind of help her kind of get back to, to herself here? Um, sometimes Paige has a tendency to, and God bless her, that she thinks like this because I think it's great. I, I, she has a tendency to think that she is playing on an Olympic team and that everybody she throws the ball to should be just as good as her. So what's the difference whether I shoot it or they shoot it? Um, but I think maybe when Aaliyah went, went down, I think that might have, she already I think was coming into this tournament with a different mindset. But I think when Aaliyah uh, went out of the game, there was a, you know, a flip and she realized um, how much more she had to do now. And it carried over, I, I would say, the last, you know, two and a half games. I never, I think she never does enough. I, she passes up so much stuff, you know, that, um, you know, maybe in the NCAA tournament she won't have the ability to pass those things up. Who knows? But, yeah, this is Paige at her best in totality, you know. Um, and she almost single-handedly took us to the Final Four and the National Championship game, and it was only two years ago. You know, how quickly people forget, right? Maggie, front row on the left. Uh, Maggie Benoni, CT Insider. How do you hope these past two games for us, or three games for us, propel her for when Aaliyah does come back in a couple of weeks? Well, we have a better player than we had on Thursday, today, I would like to think. Um, and a lot of that is on ice. As, as Nika said, ice is her own worst critic, her own worst enemy. And these three days hopefully gave ice the confidence that I can play at this level. I can compete with anyone that I have to compete with. And I can contribute to us winning. Um, and I hope that, you know, this feels so good and that she's so proud of herself that she'll want to keep experiencing this, you know, as we go forward. Um, so, yeah, when Aaliyah does come back, we have, um, we have more good players on our team than before Aaliyah got hurt, for sure. And the same goes for, you know, our other freshmen. You know, including Q. Question from Dom in the front row. Dom Amore, Hartford Current. Do you know, uh, Ice felt like the, <clears throat> the Texas game was the low point for her. And I, I think probably you may have been the most unhappy with, with her at that point. Can you kind of take us through that and kind of the trajectory from there to now and how you, you, you kind of tried to build her and she tried to build herself? Well, <clears throat> it wasn't necessarily her fault. Um, I thought going down to the Texas game, I thought we have to try to match their size. So I'm going to go with Aaliyah and Ice and Aubrey, I think it went. And it was a horrible decision by me. I put those guys in impossible situations. Um, and specifically Ice. Um, 
but I, I always want to see whether ICE is going to compete. She doesn't have to do everything right. She doesn't have to be perfect. But I want to see what her competitive spirit is out there, you know, like Nika's is or like Paige or KK or Ash. Like, I want to see, you know, how your competitive spirit can impact our team. The skilled level, that'll take care of itself down the road. And I just thought she didn't compete. She was non-competitive. And that really bothered me. Um, and so I realized that I needed to be much harder on her. I needed to demand more from her. Um, and there were trying times leading up to this weekend over the last two months. You know, there were times in practice where she reverted back to her old self and, and she paid the price for it. But those didn't last very long like they used to. And um, she put the work in. She put the work in before practice, after practice, and it's paid off. Um, you know, like I tell these kids, there's a reason why we recruited you. So I hope I'm not wrong. And I always believed that she had it in her. Uh, but at some point, you have to believe in yourself. And I think that's evident that that's a lot more than it used to be. Question from Mike all the way on the left. Gino, Paige was just saying that she's reflected quite a bit over the past couple of days, lining up kind of what she's capable of now versus what she was capable of as a freshman. And that's the one thing she said that might surprise her a little bit, like, wow, this evolution, the changes through her body, the improvement in her game. Um, what do you see in the difference between Paige then and Paige these last couple, you know, Paige this year, I guess? Um, <clears throat> this is an ongoing thing with her. Um, I, I think her, her biggest change other than actually, yeah, her body type is different. The work that she's put in is different. Uh, she didn't even know what she didn't know back then about anything, really. Um, she just went out and played, and whatever happens, happens. I want to win, but I really don't know how to prepare to win, Coach. I just want to win. And then you find out you're not going to win because you're not prepared to win. And she's had to fight some things that – make her careless, make her like lackadaisical with the ball or uh, complaining all the time when things don't go her way or uh, why don't, you know, why don't you get more at once? Well, because they don't call fouls when people foul me because they know I'm going to finish. Like it was rationalizing everything. And I think she got to the point where um, this is the burden of a star that you have to carry. And you have to be more prepared and more ready to take all the hits that are going to come your way. And not complain and not whine about it and not, you know, find ways to rationalize it and just deal with it. And the kid's so prideful. She wants, you know, to be all that and wants people to believe in her. And she wants to please everybody. And kids that want to please everybody end up pleasing nobody, you know? She needed to please herself first. You know, I deserve it. I own this now. And I think that's made the biggest difference in the world. Any other questions for Coach? She still needs nine dribbles to go by somebody, though. <laughs> Any other questions? Fix that next year. Huh? Fix it next year. Yeah. She better fix it next week. <laughs> Coach, thank you. Right. Thank you. Best I appreciate luck. it. Thank you.